Hey everybody, it's Tyler Hart back again with another Microtech video. Uh, we've done a video so far about a best practice talking about setting the system identity. Uh, talked about doing a little bit of routing with OSPF. But this is the first video where I'm actually getting into things like tunnels and VPNs. In this case, uh, we're going to start with EOIP or Ethernet over Internet Protocol. Now, EOIP is something that's kind of special. Not many vendors support it, but it's something that Microtech does really well. It allows you to extend a layer two ethernet switched network over an internet protocol network. You could conceivably combine two ethernet networks at different sites into one across the internet. Um, generally, this is this is a bad idea, and that's a that's a capital B, capital I, bad idea. Um, but there's some cases where combining Ethernet networks across your WAN is required. I've seen this a couple times with some of my customers that had really specialized medical equipment. Uh, the vendor required the sensor, the X-ray sensor, to be on the same Ethernet, that's, that's layer two network, as the server that it was sending imagery to. Uh, when I contacted the vendor, asked them, you know, where do we set the IP gateway on this device? And their answer was, oh, you don't set the IP gateway. The sensor has to be on the same network as the server. I asked them, well, is, is there any way to fix this? Is there any chance that you guys are going to implement, you know, a, a cross network solution? And their answer was just, no, we don't do that. Um, so this was a case where uh, the, the hospital wanted to be able to take x-rays from one facility and send them to the other. And the only way around that vendor limitation was to extend the Ethernet network across sites over the WAN. I've also seen this as well with some automation hardware. Um, automation for things like uh, alarms, fire detection, smoke detection, um, environmental control, things like that. Just quirky systems where the vendor requires the server or the sensor or whatever to all be on the same network. It's unfortunate and it requires us to do a bit of work around, but fortunately EOIP can help us with that. So for this scenario that we're going to walk through, uh, combining two Ethernet networks with EOIP, uh, we're just going to do it between two routers. We've got a top router and a bottom router, as you can see to the right in the topology. Uh, they're both connected to the internet. They both have WAN IPs as well as LAN IPs. Uh, so we want to bridge the 192.168.1.0 network across these two sites using their existing internet connection. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is verify that we have IP connectivity from one site to the other. So I'm going to switch over to the top site here, and I've already set the, the WAN IPs, and I've set the system identity on the routers, but I haven't done anything else. So on the top router here, we're going to go to Tools, we're going to go to Ping. I realize you can't see it when I click, um, when I click the, the menu here uh, because it's rendered as a separate video, but, but I'm going to tell you what I'm clicking as I'm clicking it. So I'm going to go to Tools. Then ping, we've already got that open here. So we're on the top router, we want to ping the bottom to make sure we have IP connectivity. So that's 198.51.100.130. Okay, looks like we have a good ping from one router to another. I've got good IP connectivity across the internet. All right, close out some of my other stuff there. So we'll start on the top router. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to get the Ethernet over IP tunnel established from the top to the bottom, and then we're going to bridge the local area networks to those Ethernet over IP interfaces once they come up. All right, so let's start here. Let's verify that we're on the top. We're on the right router. We're going to go to interfaces and then EOIP tunnel. You see right now I don't have anything here. We're going to create a new tunnel. We're going to call this um, 192.168.1.0, um, just so that people know what it is. Do slash 24. 
Now in the Ethernet over IP protocol, there's a requirement for a tunnel ID. Now by default, the tunnel ID is zero, and we're only gonna have one tunnel between these routers. But if we had multiple tunnels uh, coming from one router, we would need to increment this tunnel ID number. So all we really need to do right now is put the remote address of the other side of the tunnel in. Now we're on the top router, so our WAN is 192.0.2.150, and we are connecting to 198.51.100.130. We'll hit OK. All right, so we've got the tunnel here, but there's no status to the left. We haven't done anything on the bottom router. So let's switch over to the bottom router and configure the tunnel there. All right, so we're on the bottom router. We're gonna do the same thing, interfaces. EOIP tunnel, we're already there. Hit the plus button. We will also call this 192.168.1.0 slash 24. The remote address, since we are on the bottom and we're going to the top, now the bottom is, or excuse me, the remote address is 192.0.2.150. We're going to hit OK. There we go. All right, so I just saw a little bit of traffic coming through and the tunnel status is R. So it's up and running. You see R for running there. So now that we have the tunnel up and going, I'm gonna assign the LAN IP addresses to our ethernet interfaces. And then we're gonna bridge those ethernet interfaces for the LAN to the ethernet over IP tunnel that will combine the two into one logical network. So I'm gonna go back to the top router, the close out of this interface here. Don't need that since this is already up and running. So I'm gonna add an IP address to my Ether2 interface. That's what I'm using for my LAN. So on the top, it's 192.168.1.1 slash 24. Now on the bottom, we switch over to the bottom router here. We're gonna add an IP address under IP and then addresses. Now this IP address is in the same subnet even though it's not at the same site because we're connecting the two networks over that EOIP tunnel. 192.168.1.254 slash 24 on Ether 2. Now it's really important to remember, since we are combining these two networks, they cannot overlap in terms of IP addresses that are actually in use. If you have a 192.168.1.1 IP address on one side of the EOIP tunnel, and then you assign a 192.168.1.1 address on the other side, you're going to have conflict. Also, something really important to remember, if you have a DHCP server on both sides of the tunnel, you have to split your DHCP scope because DHCP advertisements will traverse that tunnel. You are creating an ethernet link over IP. So you cannot have overlapping IP addresses and you cannot have overlapping IP scopes in DHCP. You gotta split your scope. This is one of the complications that we see when we start combining uh, layer two networks across, uh, across the WAN. All right, so we have IP addresses on the WAN, we have them on the LAN. Now, I am on the bottom right now. If I go to tools and then ping, I can ping my own LAN address on the bottom. That's no problem. We just assigned that. But I will not be able to ping the LAN IP assigned to the top router yet. Notice I'm getting a timeout. My EOIP is established. My LANs have addresses and they've been assigned to an interface, Ether2, but I haven't bridged LAN to tunnel. Yet. That's the last thing that we have to do. All right, so let's go back to the top router and, and bridge 
we'll bridge the top land to the EOIP tunnel, then we'll go to the bottom router and we'll do the same thing. So we need to first create a bridge. We will call it um, our EOIP land bridge. I'm gonna hit okay. Now I, I'm gonna go to ports and then I'm going to combine my EOIP interface to this bridge. And I'm also going to add Ether2 to the bridge. There we go. So Ether2 is connected to the bridge port. The EOIP tunnel is connected to the bridge port on the top. Let's go to the bottom and do the exact same thing. So we're back on the bottom. Let me close this window out. Let me close this window out just so everything looks nice and fresh. Let's create a new bridge. This is the EOIP LAN bridge. Spanning tree protocol, we can just leave that on the default. That's not going to hurt anything. Let's go to ports. We will add our EOIP to the bridge. And we will then add our Ether2 to the bridge. Close out of these windows again. So let's go to Tools, Ping, and let's try this one more time. We're on the bottom router trying to ping the top. Let's try it again. There we go. I've got a good successful ping from the, from the LAN attached to the bottom router to the LAN attached to the top router. Let's stop that. Let's look at IP and then ARP. Now you see, you see one of the effects of combining the Ethernet networks across sites. I'm starting to see ARP entries for the IP addresses attached to the top, but on the bottom router. We would normally not be able to ARP for, for an IP address at a different network like that. Uh, but now with our Ether2 network extended via that EOIP tunnel, I can. So that's it. This is a pretty short video. Um, so just kind of as a refresher, we created the Ethernet over IP tunnel between the two WAN IPs. We assigned the LAN IP addresses to the LAN side on each router. We created a bridge, and then we added the LAN port and the Ethernet over IP tunnel interface to that bridge on both sides, uh, combining the LANs across the WAN. Uh, this is a fairly short video. I, I really enjoyed making these uh, for everyone, and I'm going to continue to develop this content. Um, the channel is still pretty young, pretty fresh. Uh, if you could give us a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. If the video is helpful, go ahead and throw us a like. We really appreciate that as well. And we'll see you in the next video.